In this one, you will learn how to build an audio visualizer, take it from the Rive editor and connect the animation to your microphone using the WebJS runtime. An audio visualizer uses bars to represent different sound frequencies. The height of each bar is controlled by the volume of its corresponding frequency. Therefore, we need to capture the audio, analyze the loudness of each frequency and then translate this data to drive our Rive animation. Starting with the blank Rive file, I can first create the animation for a single bar. Let's set the size, add the artboard. I can go ahead and give the artboard a name as well. Let's call it bar, the frequency it will be representing. Then I can go ahead and remove the default fill layer from the artboard, add a rectangle inside and set its size the same as the artboard. I can go ahead and use the height of the rectangle for the animation that is depending upon the loudness of the frequency this bar will be representing and right now the height changes from the center because by default the origin is in the center as well. Instead if you want the change from the bottom you can shift the origin to bottom as well in this case setting the y origin value to 100%. Now if I go ahead and change the height it will be from the bottom like this. Next, I can go ahead and round the corners of the rectangle and change the fill color. Now we can expose the rectangle's height for the runtime to control depending upon the loudness of the frequency. Again, this bar will be representing. So I can go ahead and, oh, the UI changed again. I can go ahead and add a view model for our artboard. Let's call it bar model inside of the bar model, I can add a property to control the rectangle height. So that will be a number property. I can call it percent, the loudness of the frequency. And then I can bind the view model with the artboard and the number property with the height of the rectangle. Next, I can go ahead and test the same. Start the state machine and change the property value to control the height of the rectangle. Instead of setting the value between zero and 300 max height of the rectangle, I want to set the percent number property between zero and one. To do that, I can use a simple range map converter. That is, I can go ahead and add a converter of type numeric and add range map and convert a range between zero and one and that to zero and 300. Let's set the input range as well we will be supplying the number within zero and one, and we want the output number within zero and 300 for the rectangle's height. I can go back to the rectangle's height, update the bind and set the converter. Now, if I go ahead and start the state machine and set the number property to one, it will be 300 for the rectangle. If I set the number property to 0.5, it will be 150 for the rectangle. If the number property is set to zero, the height will be set to zero as well. But if you want something to be visible at the start, you can set that in the range map. So instead of zero minimum value for the output range, I can set it to five instead and have something like this. Now that we have a bar artboard to represent a frequency, I can go ahead and create a main artboard with a list of different bars for different frequency. The size does not matter for the artboard here because we will be using layouts. I can go ahead and move the default fill layer and create a model for this as well. Let's add a view model. I can call it main model and rearrange the converter and the view models. Then inside of the main model, I can add a list property. Again, it will be the different bars for frequencies. I can name it such as well. Then I can go ahead and bind the main model with the artboard and inside of the artboard, I can go ahead and add a child layout and inside of the child layout, which will fill the whole artboard by default, add a artboard list and bind that with our list property. We don't have to set the instances of the bar model within the Rive editor because we'll handle that in the runtime. So I can go ahead and simply change the layout property, say it's alignment, add some horizontal gap, remove the default fill color, and that's pretty much it. In the runtime, we can add bar model instances inside the list 
for frequencies we want visualizations for. I can mark the artboard as a component, else it won't be included in the export, and then export the file and jump over to VS Code. Here I have a basic HTML file with some styling applied. Inside I have a canvas for the Rive animation, a button to start and stop the visualization, and a decorative grid. Then I've gone ahead and loaded the Rive dependency along with some JavaScript files. The script.js contains the logic for audio input and to determine the loudness of target frequencies, which is defined in the app JS, these right here. I have frequencies between 10 Hz and 21 kHz. We just need to load the Rive animation and update it accordingly. So first of all, let's go ahead and load the Rive animation. I can go ahead and instantiate the Rive object. I can specify the source, which will be the file we exported earlier. I have put that in this project directory. I can use that. Then I can point it to the canvas element, which will have a ID of visualizer as well. Then I can go ahead and set the artboard. By default, it will be the bar artboard. Instead, I can use the main artboard with the list. I can enable auto play and I can also auto bind the instances because we need data binding and enable layouts as well because we have a list. I can go ahead and set the fit property to drive fit layout and optionally set the layout scale factor to two like this. Then I can go ahead and enable the state machine. And finally, when the right file is loaded, I can resize it as well. After loading the Rive animation, we need to add the bars for different frequencies inside of the list. To do that, we can access the main model instance inside of which we have the frequencies list property. I can add a list item and that will be an instance of the bar model, which will add a bar inside the list as well. First of all, we need to access the list property inside the view model instance. I can go ahead and inspect the animation in the console. We have the view model instance binded to the artboard by default. And inside of that, I can access a property by its type, in this case, list, and to the list method and provide the property name to get the same. The console comes in handy to inspect the properties and our instances. I can go ahead and copy this statement and get the frequencies list property. Now that we have the list property, we can add bar model instances inside and to create an instance, we need the view model. For that, we have a handy method as well. Again, using the Rive animation, I can call the view model by name method and get a view model if we provide the name. In this case, it will be the bar model. Again, I can copy the statement and get the same. That will be the bar model. Once we have the bar model, we can create an instance using the instance method. Let's store that in a variable as well. Now that we have the bar instance, we can simply add it inside the frequencies list property using the add instance method like this. Now, if I go ahead and hit save, we'll have a bar inside the list. If I repeat the same, we'll have another bar inside the list. Now that we can add a bar inside of the list, let's go ahead and add one for each of the target frequencies. To do that, I can go ahead and simply loop over the target frequencies array for each method. I can go ahead and create a bar model instance for each frequency and add that inside the list property. If I go ahead and save the file, we have 20 bars with that setup. Now comes the fun part. On update, I can update each bar as well. I can go ahead and first of all, log out the data we are getting on update. I can save the file. And if I click on the start button, it will start the listener and it will print out an array of numbers. Let's go ahead and stop the listener to inspect the value. We have an array of numbers and each value represents the loudness for the target frequencies between zero and one. So the first value, this right here, 
is the loudness for the first target frequency that is 10 hertz. The second value represents the loudness for 15 hertz. The third value represents the loudness for 22 hertz and so on. On update, I can go ahead and loop over this array of values and update each bar one by one. So first of all, I can go ahead and get the frequencies list property. Then I can go ahead and loop over the data array with the loudness values. We'll get the loudness value and its position. That is the index. Now to get the bar at this position, I can use the list properties instance at method and simply provide it the index and we'll get the bar at that position or index. Once we have the bar instance, we can access the percent property inside with its type that will be number and then the property name, which will be percent. Then I can go ahead and set the properties value to the loudness value like this. And that's pretty much it. And go ahead and save the file. And then if I start the visualizer, it will update each bar value one by one on update like this. Back in the Rive editor, I can go ahead and now add more properties to control the Rive animation, like the color of the bar. For that, I can go ahead and add a color property to the view model. And then I can go ahead and bind that to one of the stops in the linear gradient. I can go ahead and also create some feathered versions of the fill layer. Then I can also add a text to display the frequency this bar will be representing. To make sure the text is visible on top of a white background, I can go ahead and change the blend mode to difference and have something like this. To control the text, I can go ahead and add a string property as well. That will be the frequency. I can re-export the file and get back to VS Code. Now, when we load the animation, we can go ahead and set the text that is the string property. I can go ahead and use the bar instance to access the string property, give its name, and then set the value to frequency, which we're already getting in the for each loop. If I save the file, the text will be set. Optionally, if I want, I can format the value as well if it is greater than 1000. Next, I can go ahead and set the color of the bars as well using the color property and go ahead and access the color property. Name will be color as well. And instead of setting the value, we use the RGB method. We can provide the red, green, blue values and go ahead and provide a blue color like this. Start the visualizer and we have something like this. I can provide another color as well or a random color using the math random function. It will provide a number between zero and one. So I can multiply that by 255 and do the same thing for the green and the red value as well. Now, if I start the visualization, each bar will have a different color like this. One cool thing about data binding and list properties is how we can dynamically add or update items in the runtime. I can add a variation of the default bar as well. That is, I can create a duplicate of bar and create a duplicate of the view model as well and go ahead and give it a name. Let's say bar to model and change the names of the properties inside. Then I can go ahead and fix the bindings as well with the artboard and the properties. For this bar, I can go ahead and change its origin back to the center. Then I can place it in the center of the artboard feather out the fill layer and clip out the overflowing contents from the artboard like this. With the changes in place, I can go ahead and export the file. Now to use the bar we just added, all I have to do is change the view model name using which we create the instances and that will be bar to model like this. 
Now, if I go ahead and start the state machine, it is centered. And to feather out the fill layer, I can go ahead and change the arrive dependency to use web GL2 instead like this. Now, if I go ahead and start the visualization, it is a completely different effect from before. Even with a simple data range between 0 and 1, you can create a variety of visualizations. Speaking of audio visualizations, I'm also working on a course on facial animations and lip syncing in Rive. Let me know in the comments if you're interested and subscribe to get updates. And that concludes this video. We'll see you in the next one.